say, I am. I have no power over the air. No weapon. No weapon form shall prosper against me. Greater is he. Greater is he that is in me. That is within me. In the hand. In the hand. I shall receive what he
not a victim. I am on top, not under. I am above only, not below. I want to hear you declare it this morning. Lord, I'm more than a conqueror. Whatever I put my hand to, it shall succeed. I'm successful in the field. I'm successful at home. I'm successful in business. Go ahead and declare it. I want to hear you declare it this morning. My mind is alert. I am exceptional. In Jesus Mighty name we have prayed and worship Faithful and precious father we give you praise Lord there is no one No one To be compared with you You are the reason for our living You are the confidence of our soul you are our eternal joy. You are our happiness. You are our celebration. Jehovah, we are proud of you. We are proud children of a proud God. Lord, we are excited to be in your presence. Because in your presence, we are complete. In your presence, we are full. In your presence, we lack nothing. In your presence, we, we, we are riding on the high places. In your presence, we are masters of life. In your presence, we are in command and in control. Jehovah, we want to give you praise because we know your presence is here. And so, Lord, we want to celebrate your awesome presence in this place. Lord, you're so beautiful. You're so awesome. You're so magnificent. Who can compare with you? When you speak, nobody can challenge you. At the mention of your name, demons tremble. When you appear at the mountains, they skip like rams. When you speak, the Red Sea divides titter and titter. At the mention of your name, the walls of Jericho crumble. By your power, the giants, even Goliath, die and lose his head. Recession is nothing compared to our God. When men say there is a casting down by your power, we say there is a lifting up. You are the one that makes a way where there seems to be no way. Jehovah is your name. You are the prayer answering God. We have you on the inside. We have you on our side. You are rooting for us. You are shouting for us. You are our biggest fan. You are our biggest supporter. You are our biggest encouragement. You on the inside of us, we are everything. Jehovah, we want to thank you because with you we are riding hard. You are lifting us up. We are breaking new crowns. We are making waves. Daddy, we are the unstoppable generation. We are the overcoming generation. We are the overtaker generation. Because of you. Jehovah, there is no failure in God. There is no darkness at all. There is no resistance. There is no opposition. With you on our side, we are conquering grounds. We are taking over industries. We are taking over the economy. Jehovah, let your name be glorified. The power of God on the inside of us is working wonders. We can go anywhere. We can negotiate anything. We can meet any man. We can do anything. Travel to any nation and exercise authority. Kingdom authority. Power from on high. Oh, my Father, my God. I just want to give you praise this morning because you are the God that inhabits the praises of your people. Be exalted, be magnified, be lifted high. King of all kings, Lord of all lords, greater than the greatest, higher than the highest, better than the best, stronger than the strongest, more connected than the most connected. The double-breasted God, hallelujah. You are the God that rides in the clouds. Men are like ordinary grasshoppers before you. You speak with the voice of thunder. And men tremble at the voice of God. Jehovah will give you praise. Lion of the tribe of Judah. When you roar, the earth will begin to shake. That is the God we serve. Oh, yigi yigi baba. Oh, 
that is who you are. Alabara I know, ancient of days. Oh, yiki yiki, papa keliwe, ebu bedike, ocean divider, mighty man in battle. That is the one we have come to worship. Our king, our God, the president of presidents, the one who rules and reigns in the affairs of men. Jehovah is your name. Jesus is your name. Yahweh is your name. Who will not fear you, O God? Who will not tremble at the mention of your name? Who will not bow before you? The high and lifted one. The one that created the whole world. And you are not created by yourself. Unmovable mover. Unshakable shaker. Immortal. Invisible. The only wise God. The great potentate. The rock of ages. Our hiding place. Father, we worship you. Jehovah, we magnify you. Lord, we lift you high. Be exalted, O oh God. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, we worship you. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we give you praise. You are worthy to be praised. You are the God of awesome wonders. I've tasted of your power. Would you mind to lift your hands? Holy Shen, you have shown me so much mercy. That's it, that's it. Much more than I deserve. Say, Holy Shen, Holy Shen, you are the God of us and wonders. I've tasted of your power. You have shown me so much mercy, much more than I deserve. Say, Holy Shed, Holy Shed, you're the God, you're the God of us and wonders. I've tasted of your power. Say, Holy Shed, Holy Shed. Show me so much mercy, much more than I of my voice now and those who are watching online and those who will watch this message hereafter I ask that the power of God power manifestation we break in their lives in the name of Jesus give everyone here a testimony and father let your name be glorified thank you king of glory blessed be your name in Jesus Jesus, Jesus, precious name we pray, 
And the church of God say, I'd like you to shake hands with at least seven people and tell them, I am manifesting in power. As we do that, let's celebrate the true vine. Let's celebrate the true vine. The best choir in the whole universe. Come on. Celebrate them. Celebrate them. Celebrate them. Celebrate Jesus in the true vine. Oh, we love the true vine. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Where are you going to see them very soon? Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So today we, we conclude our teaching on power manifestation. Let's celebrate God. How many of us have been blessed by power manifestation? How many of us believe God that we're already manifesting in power? Amen. And it's been, it's been awesome, power manifestation. So next month, next Sunday, <laughs> by God's grace, we are starting a new series. Praise the name of the Lord. Next month, we'll be considering a new series called Grace Unleashed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, God spoke to us at the beginning of the year and said that by the end of this year, go and check. You will have become ten times better. Now, in the month of grace, God will make you ten times better, not by your sweat, not by your struggle, but by grace. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? You see, what grace can accomplish in 24 hours, labor cannot accomplish in 24 years. Am I speaking? In the month of May, which is the month of grace, grace will work for you. Yeah. Am I communicating? Yeah. Every day you come to church, God will add an angel to you. The name of that angel is called grace. People cannot see it, but the angel will be walking. Yeah. Am I communicating? Yeah. If somebody is excited about this great church, can I hear you say Jesus? Yeah. All right. So today, we want to quickly look at power manifestation in this service. We will take part 12 and then uh, 13 and 14 in the next two services. We have been talking about power manifestation and we say power relates to Two key words from scripture, exousia and dunamis. Whereas exousia means delegated authority, dunamis means when you bring out the machine gun. <laughs> Can I hear somebody say amen? amen? From now on, those things that have been terrorizing your life, they will see the machine gun of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I thought somebody would have said a better amen. amen. So manifestation, you see, when something is inside and it is not manifested it is called latent but when that thing is stirred up and it begins to show forth that is manifestation every latent talent in you every hidden destiny every covered purpose every hidden identity from today it shall begin to manifest i thought somebody will have said the glorious amen so today we want to talk about power manifestation and the focus of our concluding series is what I call ultimate power manifestation. Please write that down. Ultimate power manifestation. Praise the name of the Lord. Somebody say ultimate. Say it again, ultimate. Say one more time, ultimate. Now, our you know, scripture, key scripture for the three services today is Matthew chapter 10 from verse 1 to the end. But because of time in this service, we will read from verse 1 to 15. So shall we rise on our feet, open our Bibles to Matthew chapter 10, and we want to all read together from verse 1 to 15. Can I say something to you? As you vocalize the word of God, the power of God will flow from you. Hi, God bless those who are saying Amen. Bible says in Revelation, blessed is he that read it. So there is power that comes, there is blessedness, there is miracle that comes when your mouth aligns with the mouth of the Holy Ghost and begins to speak the word of God. So as you read now, people will be healed. As you read now, miracles will happen. As you read now, lives will be changed. If you believe, I say, I believe. I receive. 
Matthew chapter 10, we're reading 1 to 15. Are you there now? All right, to go. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now, the names of the 12 apostles are these. The first Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the publican, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Labaius, whose surname was Thaddeus, Simon, the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent for and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of God is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely give. Provide neither gold, nor silver, nor brass in your purses, nor scrip for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staves. For the workman is worthy of his meat. And into whatsoever city or town ye shall enter, inquire who in it is worthy, and there abide till ye go thence. And when ye come into an house, Salute it, and if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if, be, if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when you depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the, the land of Sodom and Gomorrah that in that day of judgment than for that city. The Lord bless the reading of his word and the church of God say, Amen. Please sit down. I, I really hope everybody has pen and paper to write the things that I want to say today. They will change your life forever, I guarantee. Ultimate power manifestation. We have had a month long to talk about power, study power, examine it upside down, downside up. And we looked at all kinds of things. And I tell you, brethren, life is all about power. Don't let anybody deceive you. Life is about power. If you are not powerful, you are powerless. Am I communicating? Men are measured by the degree of power that they hold. Am I speaking? Men, the degree of a man is the degree of power that he commands. Are you listening to me? That's why the people of the world will do anything to get power. Power is very important. Don't let anybody deceive you about power. Power is very, very important. That's why Jesus spoke about it repeatedly. And so, you must, whatever you need to do to acquire power, please do it. Are you listening to me? Whatever you need to do to acquire power, please do it. The only thing is make sure that it is the power of God that you are pursuing. Because the power of God is the ultimate power. Hey, Kalaramo Sinti. People are running helter skelter to one babalawo to all kinds of places. So that they will acquire power. What they don't know is that the kind of power that I'm announcing to you this morning, it doesn't matter how big the occultic power is, when this kind of power appears, all powers must bow. Are you listening to me? Praise the name of the Lord. So you have come to the original source of power. We are talking about the power that created the heaven and the we are talking about the power that created all human beings. We are talking about the power that sustains life on earth. This power is greater than nuclear bomb. <laughs> Am I speaking to somebody? It's greater than atomic bomb. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm talking about power that I have seen this power work 
and it's amazing to me. We had a little child we brought for and prayed for in church, a little child. The first day this child entered her classroom, the teacher began to shout, fire, 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 fire. The teacher ran out. They held the teacher. Teacher, what is this happening, Worry? What is the problem? Look at that child. Fire, fire, fire. That was how that teacher ran away. What you don't know is when you send your child to school, there are some people that pose as teachers. They are demonic agents sent by the devil into the classroom to begin to initiate children into witchcraft. And so in pretense of teaching them, they begin to make incantation and begin to release things into the children. I come to announce to you that the God we serve, when your child belongs to that God and that power is working in the life of that child, anywhere that child go, all power that are powerless power, when they come and counter with this power, they must bow. Am I speaking to somebody here? Praise the name of the Lord. When you go to those your offices and you think you are going to meet with human beings, everybody that is in the office is not a human being. Are you listening to me? In the place where I work, a young man working very hard, suddenly they announce his promotion. The first day he entered the office where they have given him, he went and sat down on that chair. He fell. Are you listening to me? They carried him to the hospital. When he gets better in the hospital, the day he resumes work, he enters the office. That was how they made the men's mint of his life. And he lost that position. As I'm speaking for you, he's not working in that company anymore. Am I speaking? So if you are plain and ordinary and you think everything is okay, that's not how the people you are competing with are plain and ordinary. Am I speaking? But there is a power that I'm announcing to you today. When that power is working on the inside of you, whether they go to your office in the night or whether they go to where you work in the day, anywhere they go, any place they like, any occultic altar, any occultic manipulation, let them put it on the chair. Let them put it on the table. When you enter, greater is he that is in the inside of me than he that is in the world. If God therefore be for me, who can be against me? And when you enter into that place, you say by the Spirit, my and you anoint that place you bless that place and you speak to your father sit down there and nobody can touch you just am I communicating am I communicating that's your marketplace where you think that everybody is coming to sell people are not coming to sell oh. they have come to collect people's markets so while you are busy doing your own thing, they are busy going places. Can I announce to you that this is your own oracle? Yes, they can go ever wherever they like. You come to the oracle of the living God. Yes, Bible says you have come to holy man Zion. Yes. This is our holy man. Yes. Every Sunday you come here, you are fortified. Yes. When you step into that place, whatever they did, you not work. Yes. Hey! Church, am I communicating today? Whatever they do, it will not. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen to me. Everybody who is a lecturer in the university, they are not human beings. Oh. Some of those people in the university, they are demons. Are you listening to me? They are demons. They are sent by the devil in that place to begin to do all kinds of things. I've told my sons and my daughters. I said that anybody who calls himself anything, I don't care. Who's the devil have sent to campuses to begin to initiate people into a bony and to begin to do all kinds of things to defy people's daughters and to do all things. I say to you by the power of God, if any man touch you, if any man molest you, if any man stand between you and your destiny, Holy Ghost! <laughs> Hallelujah! Am I communicating today? Somebody say ultimate power manifestation. Ultimate power manifestation. Hallelujah. Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And so in that text that we have, Jesus provided the secret to ultimate power manifestation. And the problem of the church today is that people are reading the Bible, they are not reading it with a determination to obey. They are reading for head knowledge. 
Pastors are reading to preach. They are not reading to live. And there is a difference. Am I communicating? Believers are reading to satisfy their guilty conscience. I have read my Bible today. No. This is the word of life. The practical for living is inside. As you read it and you apply it, oh my God, you'll be untouchable. I say you'll be unstoppable. I thought the church of God will say amen. So, if you look at that scripture that we just read, the Lord Jesus gave the disciples some secret. In verse 1, he said, when he had called unto him the twelve, he gave them power. Everybody say power. power. No, say again so I can hear. Power. Say one more time so I can hear. Power. Say one more time so I can hear. Power. He gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Look at verse 7. There's a secret hidden in verse 7. Shall we read verse 7 together to go? And as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The secret to ultimate power manifestation is in the preaching of the gospel. Please write this thing down. It will change your life. Please go and check. There is no successful Christian who is not a preacher of the gospel. It doesn't exist. There is no prosperous believer who is not a preacher of the gospel. And preaching the gospel is not standing in the pulpit. We are talking about that your life must be a testimony of Jesus Christ. Am I communicating? Your life must be what? A testimony of Jesus Christ. That's what preaching the gospel means. There, there's, a way that, there's one to preach by standing on the pulpit. That's one way and that is beautiful. But there is preaching in the marketplace. When you succeed in your business and everybody knows that you are a believer, you are preaching the gospel. Don't need to say anything. Am I communicating? When you are taking first class and everybody knows that you are not doing anything, that you, this is hard work and the spirit of God working in you, I'm telling you people win. That's preaching the gospel. Am I speaking now? Praise the name of the Lord. You know, some Christianity, have you quoted Christianity with mediocrity? That is an error. Are you listening to me? Christianity is excellent. Be it therefore perfect as your father which is in heaven is what? Perfect. So everything you do as a Christian, you must succeed. Not only must you succeed, you must succeed exceptionally. Are you listening to me? Am I speaking today? Anything you do, you must do it exceptionally well as unto the Lord. Because in that thing you are doing, you are preaching the gospel. You see, you can preach the gospel by being the best pure water seller. You can preach the gospel by being the best teacher. You can preach the gospel by being the best student. You can preach the gospel by being the best husband. You can preach the gospel by being the best father. Am I communicating to somebody today? If you believe that something is coming to you, can I hear you say amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18. Please write this thing down. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. It says, For the preaching of the cross, lifestyle of holiness, is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, can I hear everybody say it? No, say it one more time. One more time. It is the power of God. Praise the name of the Lord. The reason why many Christians are powerless is because nobody has sat them down as I've sat you down this morning and taught them that ultimate power manifestation is in preaching the gospel. That is the truth. In the little time that I've been a Christian, I have seen the dead rise from in my own hands. It was in the field preaching the gospel, not in the house. Am I communicating? I've seen occultic men of the worst kind. There's a village we went to some time ago to preach the gospel. This man was such a principality in that village. Everybody in the village works for him. 
In the morning, they come to his house and he will give them, those days I can't remember, 10, 10 naira or something, and they will carry plates to go and buy food. They, everybody in the village was worshipping this man. Are you listening to me? Little boys and girls, we went into that place to preach the gospel. They said, this man is so powerful, that if he does his hand like this, all of us will die. We are still here today. Went into that place, preached the gospel to the people. Their eyes opened, great crusade. The whole place broke through. The man came, tried his power. It didn't work. <laughs> tried it again. It didn't work. He went and called the police. When the police came and he saw, he said, this small boy, that's what you want to arrest. They say, Baba, when there is more serious thing, call us. <laughs> Am I communicating? So, so the, the, most, the highest demonstration of the power of God I have ever seen in my life happened in the place of preaching the gospel. So you need to make up your mind this morning that starting from today, your life will begin to preach the gospel. Am I speaking to you? There are many Christians when they get to a place of work, they will not let anybody know that they are Christians. That is an error. Are you listening to me? Everywhere you go, your Christianity should not be. Somebody said if you are tried as a Christian, will they convict you? I hope you understood that. If you are put on trial as a Christian, will there be sufficient evidence to convict you. <laughs> there should be. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Because when they examine your life, everything about you should be shouting Jesus Christ. Am I communicating today? Am I communicating today? So, I will give you these few points and then we can continue in the second service. So, point number one. For every believer, there is a call of God upon your life. And this is what we have not emphasized enough and we're going to emphasize it next month. Every Christian has something that God wants you to use to preach the gospel. Are you listening to me? I was watching the other day, two young boys, they call them Sam and Song. They do comedy. How many of you have had those small boys? When they finish doing their comedy, people give their life to Christ. Can you believe that? Just comedy. After doing comedy, otako, people are responding to otako from comedy. Uh, church, am I speaking? And I know that there are more talented comedians in TV than Sam and Song. But they're just sitting down. Are you listening to me? There is something in you that if you develop and present to the world, once you do what God has, you will see people giving their life to God. Do you know that there are businessmen that their offices have become church? Are you listening to me? Anybody that entered that office to transact any business, before they go, they bow down and give their life to Christ. I know doctors that their medical practice have become church. You, you can't go to that medical practice and, as an unbeliever and come at an unbeliever. It's impossible. Church, am I speaking? So what we are talking about is that, that there is a call upon your life is that everything that God has given you is given you for a purpose so that you will preach the gospel from today. May your life become an ultimate manifestation of the power of God. Can I hear the church of God say amen? You can find that in verse, you can find that in verse 1 where he said, and when he had called, everybody say called. called. So there is a call of God upon the life of every believer for the purpose of preaching the gospel. And you can use anything to preach the gospel. Romans chapter 11 verse 29, he says, for the gift and calling of God are without repentance. First Corinthians chapter 1 verse 26 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26. For ye see your calling. Everybody say your calling. Everybody say your calling. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 20. He said, let every man abide in the same calling wherein he was called called. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18 Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18 it says, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his calling. There is a call of God upon your life. Today, before you go from this service, may you discover it. Ah, yeah. uh, I say there is a call of God upon your life. Today, before you leave this service, may you discover it. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Number two point you need to write is that everyone that is called by God is given power to perform. Everyone that is called 
by God is given what? Power to do what? That's what you saw in that verse 1. He gave them power. He gave them power. John chapter 1 verse 12. John chapter 1 verse 12. As many as received him, to them gave he power. Luke 10, 19. Luke 10, 19. Behold, I give unto you power. Number three. You need to write this quickly and I'm branding up now. Power is given for the specific purpose of preaching the gospel. Power is not given for show. Power is not given for self-aggrandizement. It's given for the specific purpose of doing what? Of preaching the gospel. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost is done what? Come upon you. And you shall be what? Witness. That word witness means preaching the gospel with your life. That's what witness means. Preaching the gospel with your, your lifestyle, the kind of results that you produce in whatever you do, is the most powerful preaching. Somebody say, don't preach at me. Your life is already preaching. It's right this statement. Don't preach at me. Your life is already doing what? So before you open your mouth to say anything, the, your conduct, your comportment, everything about you is already doing what? Preaching. I pray that the Lord will help you today. No, I pray that the Lord will help you today. So, let's look at the specific areas. When you say specific purpose of preaching the gospel, and these specific areas includes the following. Number one, it includes, please write down, casting out unclean spirits. You can find that in verse one. He gave them power against unclean spirits to do what? Cast them out. In verse eight, he said, cast out devils. Everybody say, cast out devils. Speaking now so I can hear. Say, cast out devils. Mark chapter 6 verse 13. Mark chapter 6 verse 13. And they cast out many devils and anointed with oil many that were sick and healed them. That's why in this church, every last Wednesday of the month, we are doing deliverance. God help that devil that shows up in this place on the last Wednesday of our deliverance. Oh my God. They know where they find themselves. <laughs> can I hear the church of God say Amen. Number two, heal the sick. There should be no sick person around you. Am I speaking to somebody? You yourself must not be sick. Your family must not be sick. People around you must not be sick. Because this ultimate power that God is giving to you is sufficient to heal the sick. Verse 1 say, and to heal all manner. Everybody say all manner. All of sickness and all manner. Say it now. All manner, all manner. of disease. Verse 8 says, heal the sick. Cleanse the leper, raise the dead. What does it mean to heal the sick? It means the curable disease. All the curable disease is subject to this ultimate power. Can I hear somebody say amen? amen. When it says cleanse the leper, what does it mean? Incurable diseases. All kinds of incurable diseases, HIV, hepatitis B, C, or whatever they call themselves, all manner of incurable diseases. As this power is coming upon you, you shall be able to heal them in the name of Jesus. Number three says, raise the dead. What does that mean? Raising the dead means hopeless cases, hopeless situation. Any hopeless case or hopeless situation against that confronts this ultimate power, it must fall. Can I hear the church of God say amen? amen. Uh -uh. Can I hear the church of God say amen? Finally, it talks about preach the gospel of the kingdom. Saying, verse 7, it says, go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Can I announce to you that as you leave the service this morning and you make up your mind that you're going to live a lifestyle of preaching the gospel, that everything about you is going to announce Jesus. Jesus Christ said, if I be lifted up, I will draw men unto myself. As you make up your mind that your conduct, your comportment, your speech, your, your everything about you, your character is going to be announcing Jesus. The power of God will come into you. Will begin to manifest through you. You become untouchable to the devil. You become unmolestable by the kingdom of darkness. You become unharassable by situation and circumstance. I speak to the life of somebody here that starting from today, ultimate power will begin to work in your life. In the name of God the Father. I thought somebody would have said they live in a man. Yeah. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. Bow down your heads. Let's talk to this God in prayer. Ultimate power.
manifestation. I don't know if you are here today and you have not given your life to Jesus sincerely. You have not given your life to Jesus seriously. You're still rising and falling. I'd like you to pray this simple prayer with me to give your life to Jesus. I'd like you to say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Come and be my Lord and my personal Savior. Forgive all my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Thank you, Jesus. I am born again today. In Jesus' name we pray. All eyes closed and all heads bowed. If you pray that prayer, I'd like you to lift your hand above your head. If you want to give your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus, I want to pray with you right now. One, two, go. Lift your hand above your head. If you want to surrender your life to Jesus or you just pray that prayer with me all over the place, God bless you. Please keep that hand lifted until they put a, a green card in your hands. God bless you. Please keep that hand lifted so that the ushers can see you and put a card to you so that we can connect with you after now. Yeah, quickly, quickly, all over the place all over the place. Please lift that hand. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus. You want to surrender your life to Jesus. Thank you, Father. Precious Heavenly Father, I pray for these, your children who are surrendering their lives now. Lord, I ask of you in that name that is above every name, that Lord, you will cancel their names from the book of death and write their name in the Lamb's book of life and release upon them the ultimate power manifestation. In the name of God the Father. I thought the church of God would say amen. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. If you believe that something has come into you, can I hear you say?